Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 7, data type conversions in C Sharp. In this session, we will learn implicit conversions, explicit conversions, and the difference between parse and try parse methods. Let's look at an example. Let's say I have a variable of type integer which is initialized to a value of 100. Now, I want to convert this to float data type. So let's say I have a variable of type float and I want to initialize this variable with the value of this variable. So I will say float f equal to i and then I want to print the value of this float variable. So now if I go ahead and run that, integer is initialized to 100, the value of integer is assigned to float and the float value is printed which is 100. So the conversion happened without we having to do any explicit conversion. So what are we doing here? We are converting an integer to a float data type. From the previous video sessions we know that float is a much bigger data type than integer. So obviously when we convert integer data type to a float data type there is going to be no loss of information number one. And number two, there isn't going to be any exception as well because integer is much smaller than float data type. Okay, so implicit conversion, when does that happen? Implicit conversion is done by the compiler for us automatically when there is no loss of information if that conversion is done. So obviously when we convert from integer to float, there is going to be no loss of information and if there is no possibility of throwing any exceptions during that conversion okay because float is a much bigger data type than integer so there is no possibility of overflow exception happening so that's why the conversion happens for us implicitly without we having to do it okay so let's think about this the other way around let's say I have a variable of type float which is initialized to 123.45 and since it is a float variable I have to you know suffix letter f. Now I have another variable of type integer i and I want to initialize this with a float value. So if I do this look at the red squiggly line under that f cannot implicitly convert type float to int because we know that float is a much larger data type than integer number one so there is a possibility of overflow exception if the number is much bigger but in our example here the number is 123.45 so integer can hold 123 in fact it can hold a much bigger number so there isn't going to be an overflow exception but there is going to be loss of information in what form? Float can have fractional part, but integers cannot have fractional part. So now, if we actually try and print this integer, have a look at what's going to happen. It doesn't give us any exception. Uh, sorry, but we have to do that conversion here because compiler will not do the conversion for us. And there are two ways to do the conversion. That's the explicit conversion. Because look at this, integer cannot hold fractional values. So if the compiler were to do this conversion, what would have happened? You know, we would have lost that fractional part. And if this is a measurement of some, you know, engineering calculation or a chemical formula or any financial value, it would have a great impact on the business. That's why the compiler, you know, if there is going to be any loss of information or if there is going to be an exception, it will not do the conversion for us. We have to do that explicitly. Okay? And how do we do it explicitly? There are basically two ways. One is you can use the type cast operator, which is an opening and a closing parenthesis. And the other way is we can use the .NET Frameworks convert class. So let's go ahead and use the type cast operator. So I want to convert this variable to be of type integer. Now if I go ahead and run, look at this. 
the actual value of this float variable is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But since we have converted that to an integer, we have lost that fractional part. So that's why, you know, the C-sharp compiler didn't do this conversion implicit, implicitly for us because there is a loss of information here. So obviously, so the general rule is that if you are converting from a smaller data type to a bigger data type, the conversion happens for us implicitly. But on the other hand, if we try to convert a bigger data type to a smaller data type, because there is a possibility of overflow exceptions, number one, and there is possibility of, you know, loss of information, that's why the compiler will not do the implicit conversions for us, and we have to do the explicit conversions. And one way to do the explicit conversions is to use the typecast operators as shown here, and the other way is to use the convert class. For example, I can do the same thing using the convert class, convert dot to int. Now, you will see different versions of, you know, two int methods here, two int 16, 32, 64. Now, what are these? Depending on the, you know, the size of the integer data type that you are using, you know, in 16 or in 32 or in 64. In 64, obviously, we have 64 bits there, meaning 8 bytes. It can hold a much bigger number. Okay, but anyhow, let's use two in 32. And if I go ahead and run this, there's not going to be any difference in the output except that we are using the convert class. So within the convert class, there are actually several methods. You know, if you want to convert to decimal, you can do that. If you want to convert to date time, you can do that. To cat, to billion. So from any data type to any data type, if you want to convert, you can make use of this convert class. That's another way that we have to do the explicit conversions. Now, what is the difference between using typecast operator and using the convert class? If I use the typecast operator, and if this float is going to hold a bigger number than an integer, now obviously if you look at this number, this is much bigger than an integer uh, variable can hold. So if I run this, and if I try to convert this float to an integer, there will actually be an exception because an integer variable cannot hold this huge number but look at what's going to happen so when i run this oh actually i think it can hold that number let's make this slightly bigger yeah so now if you look at this one we got a number saying minus two this is the least the minimum number of an integer okay the interesting thing note to notice here is that the typecast operator did not throw an exception. It tried to do that conversion from float to integer, but it failed, and it's you know it just sh it is just showing the minimum number that it can hold. So if we use the typecast operator, we don't get an exception. But on the other hand, if we try to do the same thing using the convert class, we get the exception. So when I use the convert class, so convert dot two in thirty two. I run this, I get an exception, unhandled exception, system.overflow exception. Obviously, this value, when I'm trying to hold that in this variable of type integer, it cannot hold it. It's much bigger, so obviously, overflow exception occurs. Okay, so there are two ways to do explicit, exp uh, explicit conversion. One is to use the typecast operator, the opening and closing parentheses, and the other one is to use the convert class. The difference between them is that we use the typecast operator, we don't get an exception, whereas with the convert class, we get exceptions, if at all there is any exception. So we have seen the implicit and explicit conversions. So this is an example of an impl implicit conversion example which we have already seen and an example for explicit conversion as well and as I told you there are two ways to do it using the typecast operator and the convert class the difference typecast operator doesn't throw an exception if there is a problem converting that data type whereas convert class does throw an exception and finally there is another way to actually convert between data types for example Let's say the number that I have is in a string format, for example, str number equals 
100. So basically, this is a number we know that as humans, but then since that is, you know, enclosed within double quotes, it is treated as a string by the C sharp compiler. So because of that, if I try to do this, int i is equal to str number, if I try to do this, the compiler will throw an error string saying that cannot implicitly convert between types, string and integer. Okay, so obviously we got to do the explicit conversion. And, and uh, if the number is actually is in a string format, there is a better way of doing this using the parse method. So we want to convert this to integer. So int dot parse function. When you call that, look at the data type. It expects, you know, a string to be passed in, in our case, str number. And it will convert that string to an integer. So obviously, if you look at the return type from the IntelliSense, the return type of the parse method is integer. And it will store that in this variable. So obviously, when we try to print that, console.write line i, it prints that. Okay, very good. A third way to convert from one data type to another, especially if that data type is in a string format. Okay, now let's say for example, by mistake, you know, I have some digits here, some characters, some alphabets. Okay, now is this a valid number? Definitely not. Now if I go ahead and try to run this application now, when the application runs, it tries to convert this number to an integer. And obviously it cannot do that and there will be a format exception. So the format of this number cannot be converted to an integer. So we get an exception. So let's run that and format exception as expected. Okay. Now, how do we avoid these exceptions? There is a variation of parse method which is nothing but a try parse method. Okay. So let's say, for example, I want to convert, you know, this to an integer. I can use instead of parse. There is a try parse method, and if you look at the parameters for this method, they are slightly different. You know, it takes a string input, which we want to convert to integer data type, in our case, str number, and then the other output is an output parameter. You know, after this method converts this to an integer, where should it store that value into the parameter that we are going to pass right here? Okay, so first let's create a variable to hold the result. So int let's say result and let's initialize that to zero. And now we pass this variable as a second parameter. So now what's going to happen? Okay, another important thing you have to use the out keyword. I'll tell you why in just a bit. Okay, so this try parse method. It's going to take the string, convert it to integer, and store it in this variable. And this is an output parameter for this method. Now, functions can have different types of parameters. Value parameters, reference parameters, output parameters, and parameter arrays, which we'll be talking about in a very great detail in a later session. So until then, don't worry about that. But what's happening here is this try, try parse method converts the string into an integer and stores in this variable but here look at this the string cannot be converted to an integer so what will happen to this this will remain zero and another interesting thing to note is that the return type of try parse method is actually boolean so what does that mean the try parse method will return true if the conversion is successful otherwise it will return false so there is a boolean written data type that's coming back if the conversion is successful, it returns true, otherwise false. So we can say bool is conversion successful. Now, if this conversion is successful, then this method will return true. So what we can do is if conversion is successful, then we know that there will be an integer number that we can print else we can say 
and so on the flight line. Please enter a valid number. Okay, so if we go ahead and run this, what's going to happen? Since this number cannot be converted into an integer, it throws in, I mean, it doesn't throw an exception, but the try parse method will return false. And since this is false, it gets to the else form and it will ask us to enter a valid number. On the other hand, if we enter a valid number, something like 99987, and run this program again, it prints that valid number. Okay, so that's basically the difference between parse and try parse. So let's go back to the slides. So if the number is in a string format, you have two options basically to convert that from string to any other data type, maybe integer, float, double, whatever. Okay, parse and try parse. Parse method throws an exception if it cannot parse the value, whereas try parse returns a boolean indicating whether it is succeeded or fail. True if successful, false if fail, but it doesn't throw an exception. So in general, use parse if you are sure that the value will be valid and there's no and there's not going to be any exception. Otherwise, use try parse in case of any doubt. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.